Star Trek Beyond is directed by Justin Lin, the man behind the most recent Fast and Furious films, and the best, I might add. And it stars all these people. All these people are in the movie. There's tons of people. I'm not... They're all... They're in this movie. You knew that already. Due to a series of catastrophic events to the Enterprise, it crash lands on a planet where all of the Enterprise crew are scattered as they try to survive from the evil wrath of Crawl, played by Idris Elba, who's after a very specific piece of technology that has been hidden away on the Enterprise for many years. His reasons for wanting this device are unclear, but what is absolutely crystal clear is that he's an evil person. He's gonna kill everybody and it's not good. The trailers for this movie were underwhelming to say the least, and I'm a big Star Trek fan, so that's not good. Anyone who didn't give a shit about Star Trek definitely didn't give a shit about this movie when they saw the trailers for it. The poster campaign, however, was awesome. The posters for this movie were really exciting, so I didn't really know what to think. I'll tell you what, this is proof positive. Once again, the trailers really don't mean shit. Trailers are just a marketing tool to get us into the movie. In the end, though, what really matters? The film. And this one was damn good! This surprised me! Really big surprise! Star Trek Beyond is an absolute blast. I was entertained from opening to close. This was a ton of fun in the theater. A big summer blockbuster with all the things you want to see. Explosions and fun action sequences. Good characters with good humor. And a respect for the original. This movie is celebrating the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. And it does it very well. Not only because it's a very entertaining, fast-paced Star Trek adventure, but because it does pay respect to the original cast, to the original crew. It does have an affinity for it, and you can feel it through almost every scene in this movie. A few in particular that actually made me tear up. And, and it was a happy cry. It was just like a, a, a warm good feeling that you don't get that often in movies. Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto are both, once again, fantastic as Kirk and Spock. I love seeing these characters on the screen, but what I really liked about Beyond is that the previous two films have really explored Kirk and Spock's relationship. This one really gave a lot of time to Spock and Bones, played by Carl Urban, because these two characters get separated from everyone else and they have to make their way through this wilderness of this odd planet they're on, and they have a lot of dialogue together, and the dialogue for them is really Really good classic Spock and Bones stuff and a lot of this is written by Simon Pegg and his writing partner and I was genuinely very impressed with their writing because this movie has a great feeling of character because the most important things about the Star Trek movies no matter what you want to say it's the characters. Star Trek movies stopped being very original a long time ago because there's really only so much you can do with a spaceship and a crew and aliens and the galaxy and stuff. What makes these movies special are the characters. What keeps us coming back to these movies are the characters. And this movie is well aware of that because there's a ton of character depth woven throughout this movie. It's not just a lot of fun action. It is a damn entertaining movie that knows how to be a summer blockbuster, but also build character and that is great to see. Idris Elba plays the main bad guy in this movie, and of course, he's Idris Elba, so he's pretty badass as this character. The character is not given quite as much depth as you would want for a long portion of the movie, and for the majority of the movie, I was like, eh, so he's fine as a character. Idris Elba was great as this character. He did a lot of really cool stuff with his voice. I don't know how much of that was post sound work, but I thought he was great as this menacing person who's after this device, and you bought into his character, but there wasn't much going on there, and you were sort of murky on his entire motivation until the third act. No spoilers. But then I was like, okay, there's, okay, yeah, I can get behind that. So when you're watching this movie during the first two acts, if you're feeling like he's kind of an eh villain, wait. Patience is a virtue. But easily, my favorite new addition to this movie is the character of Jayla. This is one badass woman. Oh my God, she was cool. I loved her character. She looked awesome. The makeup work was fantastic. She was a fun character that had good humor woven throughout her, but she could also kick a lot of ass, which is really fun to see. But she was never annoying. She never overstayed her welcome. There wasn't anything about her character that bugged me. She was just awesome. So do I like this one as much as the other two? No, I don't. I think it's my least favorite of this trilogy for a few reasons. Number one being that the first act is a bit meandering. It takes a while to get the movie really going, at least for me. There are fun things to look at and it's never boring, but it just didn't hook me until the second act. 
And then the third act got even better. This is that rare movie where each act builds upon the last and for me, got better as it went along. That's hard to do. Usually a movie peaks at one point or peaks at the end and but isn't that good in the beginning or it peaks in the middle or something. This movie has a steady incline of awesomeness. Justin Lin genuinely surprised me. The action is not quite as intense and laser edged in regards to how visceral J.J. Abrams directs his films. But the smaller character moments are well realized. The script respects the original characters as well as these new characters. It understands the Star Trek mythos and it understands how to make a fun Star Trek movie. This is an extremely good and fun Star Trek film that for me wasn't quite as good as those first two and does not have as compelling a villain as Benedict Cumberbatch was in Into Darkness. Star Trek Beyond was a blast. It's a very good summer movie, it's a good Star Trek movie, and I'm going to give it an A-. Also, I just want to say, rest in peace, Leonard Nimoy, you are a legend. And rest in peace, Antoine Yelchin, gone way too soon. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to this weekend and the return of the Retro Rewind segment. I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite classic childhood shows, Are You Afraid of the Dark? You guys are the best. Thank you so much as always for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.